It was not a surprise to see an international superstar named as Leinster's next signing, but it was a massive surprise to see that it was all black Geordie Barrett. Go on, be honest, who saw that coming? My goodness me, what a signing. Now, first and foremost, if you are a New Zealander, I mean, you're, you're, and you're a rugby fan, I'm sure you've seen this already, but uh, just relax. I'm sure when you first saw the headline, Geordie Barrett's leaving to go to Leinster, your heart must have been in your mouth. It's only for six months, from December the 24th of this year until the end of the season. A sabbatical, if you like. So equally, by the same token, don't get too excited if you're a Leinster fan, because, um, I mean, how many games will Geordie Barrett play in that time? Maybe 10, 12 games, perhaps? Nonetheless, drink it in. Enjoy this, because he is one of the best players on earth. And, yeah, along with... RG Snayman, who they've already signed for next season. That squad is box office. The thing is, what you've got to remember is Geordie Barrett plays in a position that, that Leinster have a real lack of depth. It, oh, no, that's right. They're absolutely stacked everywhere. But nonetheless, uh, I still love it. And actually, when you think about it, Geordie Barrett is like a... Um, he's the perfect player to have on a sabbatical because... He's a Swiss army knife of a rugby player. He can play 12, 13. He can play on the wing. He can play fullback. He can do a job slotting in at 10. He has done so at international level. He's a goal kicker as well. So th the first thing a lot of people have said when they announced this signing, well, other than just wow, uh, anyone who's sort of tried to pour a bit of cold water on it, saying, oh, what's this going to do? It's going to harm the development of Jamie Osborne or Kieran Frawley or... What, what about the centres they've already got? Don't need to worry. Geordie Barrett can play right across the whole back line. So I don't think he's going to take too much opportunity away from any individual player. And in fact, when you look at Leinster with Kieran Frawley and Jimmy O'Brien, and just generally, actually, their players are, are multi-skilled, multi-positional. And that's very much the way that, that rugby is going. And... Uh, more than anything, think just I'd flip it round and go think how much development you can get in in O'Brien, in Frawley, and in Osborne by the sheer presence of one of the greatest players on earth. This is absolutely brilliant. Fifty-seven caps. He's a prime age, twenty-seven years of age, and I mean, you've, uh, Leinster fans have got to wait eight months, but it's going to be worth the wait when he's there for for six months. As I say, December the 24th till the end of the season, the instant thing that pops into my head is, could his debut, could he be making his debut on St. Stephen's Day at that big match? That would be something very special, wouldn't it? Another thing which has been pointed out, I've, I've, my rugby WhatsApp groups have been going absolutely bonkers this evening, as you can imagine. And uh, someone who knows a lot more about uh, Irish rugby than I do said that the RDS is being redeveloped next season. So Leinster will be playing more games, maybe all of their games, I'm not entirely sure, at the Aviva Stadium. And if that were the case, it would be quite a shrewd thing to do if you can find the funding and the investment to get box office names who can fill a massive stadium. And Geordie Barrett and RG Snayman are those names. And let's not forget the rumour that's also been bubbling around. Could the three of them all be turning out for Leinster next season? Taniella Tupou, could he be making a debut at some point for Leinster? We will wait and see. I think this is brilliant. It is only short term. Um, who knows, it may turn to something more in the future. I mean, from Geordie Barrett's point of view, there, there are a lot of people that have pointed out, look at the financial state that Ulster are in. Uh, this, this feels like it's just even more concentration of funding and of money to already the richest union in of the four Irish provinces and that is true but this is this is undoubtedly a good thing for rugby for, a great thing for the champions cup great thing for the URC great thing for Irish rugby great thing for the development of, of young players and I'd rather look at this with a glass half full rather than trying to look at it with a glass half empty and because quite a lot of those comments whilst I understand them from Ulster fans Connacht fans Munster Munster fans anyone coming out with a negative I, I understand it 
but I also think it, it just smacks a little bit of jealousy. And actually, can we just be excited about this one? I, I, I certainly am. I can't wait to see Geordie Barrett. Might actually get to see him in the flesh. I've seen him a couple of times playing for New Zealand during the Rugby World Cup. He is absolutely class. And I was thinking, and here's a question. I, I might do a video on this uh, in the coming days. The best overseas players that have played in Ireland. I mean, obviously, they're not they're not classed as overseas players now. But you would you would have put Jameson Gibson Park, James Lowe, uh, in on that list. But Issa Nefewa is the instant one that springs to mind for Leinster. Is he is he Leinster's best overseas import? Rocky Elsom, uh, and then I was thinking of other provinces. You'd say uh, Charles Pietal, Ruin Pinar at Ulster, Doug Howlett at Munster, Mills Mulyaina at Connacht. Bundia Key, obviously, if you want to go there. But great, brilliant, brilliant for Northern Hemisphere that we get someone of that calibre uh, up here. I can't wait for it personally. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Uh, you're not dreaming, Leinster fans. This is real.